Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Eligible voters in Kogi State, the world-famous confluence between Nigeria's biggest uh, rivers, are expected to return to the polls to vote for a new governor after the expiration of the incumbent Yahaya Bello. One of those lining up to replace him at the government house in Lokoja is our very next guest, Okeme Adejo, a lawyer and governorship candidate of the Labour Party. He recently published what he calls the nine-point agenda for addressing the leadership deficit in Kogi State. Barista Adejo joins us now to th throw more light on that document. Welcome to the morning show. Adejo. Now, let's go straight into it. Uh, you know, Kogi State has been a swing state, changing hands between APC and PDP. I want to know exactly how you intend to leverage uh, Labour Party's new prominence to secure major gains in the forthcoming governorship election, as it has to do with your recently published nine point agenda. And of course, uh, we're looking at uh, the emergence of uh, Labour Party, as I've just referred to, as the third force in uh, the recent election. So how exactly do you plan to upstage, uh, you know, this existing APC, uh, Yahaya Bello, uh, huge emotion? in the upcoming Kogi State governorship elections exactly. Thank you. Good morning, Shadon. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Good morning, good morning fellow Nigerians, and good morning, Kogi State. Uh, thank you for having me. Kogi State is a state that has been blessed with numerous natural mineral resources. We have about 26 viable mineral resources in Kogi State. We have a large land mass, which is, Kogi is like the fifth largest state in Nigeria. We have the water body. We have the confluence. Kogi is the first federal capital territory of Nigeria. And that's why our government house is called the Lugard House. We have the mountains. We have beautiful cultural sites. Uh, and this, Kogi, it has boundaries with nine states in Nigeria, an FCT in extension. And what does that leave us? Kogi is strategically located. Lagos has this body waters that has been used to their advantage. But the problem we do have in Kogi is, I lived all my life in Kogi. I did my primary school in Kogi. I did my secondary school in Kogi. I did my university in the prestigious Kogi State University. And I did law school in Lagos and had several certifications. And I'm a businessman and calling into mining too. So Kogi, the, my predecessors, the normal practice in governance in Kogi, we are primarily a state that our, our governors rely on the federal government allocation and little IGR, which is barely, as at now, our IGR in Kogi state, it's barely less than two billion naira monthly. We intend to turn Kogi from a civil service state to the commercial hub of Nigeria by the natural resources that we are blessed in. Take for instance, there is this company thriving very well in Kogi, the BN Ceramics and the West African Ceramics, located at Ajikuta. When they came in, then they have one production line. But today they have like five production lines, which the company is a multi-billionaire company in Kogi State. If in our, in, 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 when I'm the governor of Kogi State, we intend to bring critical stakeholders to explore our mining industry, to bring about wealth and job creation for our people. We have a vast land that is very rich in agriculture. Look at the Ibaji area, for instance. The most of the rice being produced and, 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 and the most of the rice being consumed in Nigeria and produced is from Ibaji in Kogi State. But we don't have uh, a rice mill. We intend to go into small scale businesses and companies to empower our people. We have large uh, cashew deposits in Kogi that are being used for export, they're not. We intend to bring those companies, and we're in conversation and discussions with those companies to come into Kogi State. So we want to do a total turnaround on our agricultural revolution. Look at our cassava productions in Kaba, the west aspect of Kogi. We have just one little cassava processing company there. We intend to bring companies in our administration. And we have lived all our lives in Kogi. Most of the governors we have in Kogi can't relate and connect to our people. They don't virtually know the problems of our people. I and my team have gone to all the look and cranny of the state, and we know peculiar problems that our people are suffering from. Majorly is leadership and our style and mode of leadership. We are relying solely on our locations, which 
is not going to help our state. We intend to partner with the federal government day and night to ensure Ajikuta works, which will bring about numerous job creation for our people. So the idea of Liberal Party, which is the formation of the NLC and the TUC, is a party that, that cares for the common man, the artisans, the liberals, and what have you. So we intend not just paying salary, but also to address the issue, issue of unemployment in our state. We have so much to offer for Kogi State. We want to bring a movie village into Kogi to employ our people, because our people are very skilled. We have good actors in Kogi. We have a lot that is going wrong in the state. And, and governance is not all about just it's reaching the welfare of our people. So these are the areas that our government has not been addressing. The welfare of the youth have not even been addressed at all. Right now in Kogi, our sports, our sports are not viable again. Back in the days, we used to have Kogi United, with the lack of any back, Kano Pillars come to Kogi and play. We have a wonderful football club that goes around the world on tournaments and bring trophies home. But now our, our sports sector is down. In the central, the most beautiful weavings you can find are the women and the men from the central. Or they actually, what is in my head? It's being weaved by people from the central. But due to not government motivation and an incentive on those people, they have all left Kogi. So we intend to bring the hope of Kogi back. We want to take Kogi so that we'll turn Kogi around to the advantage of our people. All right. All right, thanks, uh, Okeme. Uh, but I'd like you to focus uh, more on your electability. Um, we have said that the Labour Party, uh, on whose platform you are running, is the third force. But a lot of people will say that, uh, yes, uh, maybe Labour Party emerged as a third force uh, because of the personality of uh, Peter Gregory O'B as the pres presidential candidate. But aside uh, that and a few senators and, you know, some House of Reps members that were elected on the platform of the uh, Liberal Party and, of course, uh, the governor in Abia State, that you really can't say you, can't, you, you, you will struggle to feel the impact of the party in other states, particularly those like Kogi, which will be having election uh, in November. So my question to you is how strong is Labour Party in Kogi State and how will you be able to use that platform to defeat the candidate of the ruling party on the one hand, uh, Ododo, and of course also possibly better known PDP uh, candidate, uh, as you know, Adino Melae. How do you see yourself you know, squaring up against those two formid formidable uh, opponents? And, you know, again, to back to Kogi, Labour Party performed quite low, even in the presidential you know, election uh, for Kogi State. No single House of, uh, House of Reps member, no single senator from Kogi. What are your chances? Oh, thank you, Steve. <laughs> you know, Kogi is a peculiar state. First of all, I'm from the east part of Kogi State. And, and politics is a game of number. I'm from the Kina local government, which is the largest local government in West Africa. And I did all my school in Kogi State, which I'm from a political family. And around the state, so everybody okay, is yearning for Liberal said, Party. You said your local Liberal government is the, is the largest in West Africa? Did, did you say that? Yeah, the Kina local government, the Kina local government. Larger than Alimo in Lagos. I'm from the Kina local government. Yes, you could check it out. All right. The largest local government in West Africa. So I'm from the Kina local government. And everybody, what Kogi State is looking for is governance. And that is what I'm ready to offer. Kogi is looking for someone that could bring back the trust, someone that could revive our economy someone that could relate with our people, someone that could bring that lost hope, someone that could use what it has to ensure that the welfare of our civil servants are well taken care of, the pensioners are well taken care of, the artisans, the, the youth, and what have you. And that's what I have to offer. I've been going around the look and crannies of the state in my electionary process. 
and the, re the reception is enormous. You can possibly see that people can't wait for November to have me as the next elected governor in Kogi State. Mostly in, in, in politics, theory is always different from practical. Labour Party, we have a system that runs and we have not, we have not derailed from that. And when close contracts are people, because governance is all about bringing it close to the people. You can't be a governor and you're not accessible. You can't say you cannot be reachable. And we have gone around, we have met with critical stakeholders, and we have told them what we want to do for the state. And trust me, I don't see anybody coming our way towards November 11th, by God's grace. All right then, so let's focus now on your uh, nine point agenda. Uh, one of your uh, agenda points focuses on security and peaceful coexistence, uh, something which, uh, you know, apart from you know, Kogi State and other states, of course, insecurity is something that we grapple with right now in Nigeria. But considering Kogi's unique position with uh, multiple neighboring states, like you mentioned uh, when you were answering the initial question, I think you said about nine states, uh, how do you intend to forge a dynamic bond of uh, uh, brotherhood among the diverse people of the state, as well as, uh, you know, collaborating with uh, security officials in Kogi State to bring about, uh, you know, a, a, a feeling of peace, uh, even as, you, uh, as you've stated in your nine points agenda. Thank you, Shadon. Kogi State is a peace-loving state. Kogi State is a state that when you are coming from Lagos and your car is having itches and you just find out that you're close to Okene, you say, I'm home. Kogi people are one of the most wonderful people you can find on the planet Earth. And we don't discriminate amongst ourselves. But we want to, we want to bring about a security architecture that can cater for our borders. And most of the problem of, of crime in a state is when the youth are not properly engaged, when the people don't have what to do. When people are graduating, they are leaving schools every day, they don't have jobs. And those that have jobs cannot, the salaries are very minor. They have stipends that could not cater for their welfare. So we intend to bring those stuff that bind us together, not stuff that will divide us. Take, for example, our sports, sporting activities in the football team. Every central district of the state does participate. They are all team players, and everybody around the state come to involve in our sport activities before. Kogi, whenever we have cultural, whenever we have, whenever we have sport and we have uh, events, everybody does come. So we want to create a movie village in Kogi that will bring about massive commerce for our people because we have lots of stories that are untold in Kogi. We have cultural sites that have not been visited. So we want to bring those stories in, those stories bind us together. And most especially, the, the technical schools in Kogi. We have legacy schools that are no longer functional. The likes of Amco College in Okene, the likes of Titko College at Be, Ochaja Boys, Dekina, or GSS Dekina. These are legacy schools by the likes of Bariwa in Zaria. Most of these schools are now going to extinctions. We intend to revive back those schools. So once we have these and we'll make every stakeholder as we are in communications with around the state, if people could have jobs to do, we could bring in companies and everything in Kogi State, trust me, there will be that love and that bond. It's just a function of people not having what to do that brings about unemployment, that brings unrest into the state. And that's the critical areas that we want to tackle in our government. All right, okay, man. Uh, which, uh, you know, of course, that um, a Labour Party is factionalized nationally. Which of the factions do you belong? Is it the Abure faction or the Apapa faction? That's one. And then secondly, you've been talking about this film village uh, a dream of yours. Uh, you are a lawyer, but then you've mentioned uh, the part of film village about twice or thrice in this interview. Uh, tell us about your interest uh, in the arts and culture and tourism uh, and how much more do you want to do for Kogi uh, than the sitting governor has done? I know that uh, uh, the governor at a point brought a whole load of you know, filmmakers uh, to uh, uh, Kogi State to have the Born, the Born Awards, Best of Nollywood, you know, awards in, in the state. And it was very open uh, to the people in the cultural sector. How much more can you do and why the interest uh, uh, in trying to achieve what both Lagos and Kano states, which are by far bigger economies, what they couldn't achieve up till now in terms of having a proper 
film village. Oh, thank you, Steve. The thing about the film village is when you're coming into Kogi, you check the serene nature of our state. You see the mountains, you see the river, you see the cultural sites of our people. And there's this movie, Awumi, being premiered over the cinema by a young producer from Kogi, goes by the name Thompson Makolo. The movie has gone to different stages around the world and is doing exploits. And we have many of Kogites that are well versed with film production and this thing. And we have gone around, we are not just coming, we have gone around to the needs of our people. And they say if they could have all these in place, it will take most of the people off the street. It will bring about that, that job creation and selling Kogi cultural heritage to the world. And we have been discussing with international partners, people that are versed in the movie industries. And they are ready to come and invest in our movie industry in Kogi because we have the, the, this, the environment for it. And it will bring about an economic boom for our people. We, our government is all about paying attention to those needs of our people. They are not just only those that are working and those that are salary earned, so that the youth can be massively employed. That's what I'm looking at that. And your, the other question that you talk about, the, the faction of Labour Party that I belong, I belong to the authentic faction of the authentic Labour Party, which is the, under the chairmanship of Aburi. That's the part of the party that I belong to, the authentic faction of the Labour Party. So. But the case, the case is in court. Uh, I know that Aburi's uh, faction uh, uh, got um, a headway at the appeal court, uh, but what are the chances that uh, their proper faction could spring up a surprise, maybe up till the Supreme Court level? No, Labour Party is an organized party. Labour Party is a formation, just like you know, of NLC, TUC, yeah. and the trade union. And our papa, even if Aburi is not a chairman today for the record, he's not our papa. We have the deputy national chairman, which is Madam Ladi. We have hierarchies of successions in Labour Party. Labour is an organized party that everything is well documented. So it's not just a party that someone could just come from somewhere and hijack the structure of the party. So even in Supreme Court, just as a lawyer, I assure you that we're going to have victory. There is no problem. That's a settled stuff. Things are being done constitutionally. You don't do things by hijacking a process. So if, wherever court you go to, trust me, we're going to have judgment. So we don't have doubts on that. Thank you for that uh, uh, confirmation, uh, Mr. Adejo. Now, let's talk agriculture. I mean, it's a significant sector in Kogi State. Uh, first of all, I want to know what your plans are, especially now with uh, the declaration of a state of emergency on food, uh, to revo revolutionize the agricultural sector, to make the state in itself self-sufficient, uh, create employment, and of course, generate substantial profits. I also want you to uh, talk to me about how industrialization and investment, which you know is crucial for economic growth, how you intend to tap into Kogi's vast mineral resources to attract both local and foreign direct investments, especially, as you mentioned earlier, in the context of the, uh, of the Aja, Aja Okuta's uh, potential. Uh, thank you, Zayden. You know, agriculture, Kogi, just like I said, is blessed. And we have like the biggest, the fifth biggest landmass in Nigeria. And we intend to leverage on that in our administration. That, and we have very vital uh, agricultural products that are, are viable in Kogi. Like, just like I said, the Ibaji area of Kogi, the rice being produced from Ibaji is one of, I could just say, is the major rice that people are, that are consuming in Nigeria. So we want to bring a rice processing meal, because we don't have that in Ibaji at the moment. So the rice are being sold at cheaper rates to, to people that come to just buy from the local farmers. So we intend to, to pull in our resources into the rice processing industry. And we want to mechanize our farming. Up to now, we don't have mechanized farming in Kogi State, which is giving us setback. So once we do this, we mechanize our farming and we, 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 we revitalize our farming, sec our agricultural sector. It will not only bring about food sufficiency for the state, it will bring about that that we could export out, which vitals economies in the world like, like Malaysia, 
survive solely on 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 on, on, on oil. Economies like China, look at Ukraine, they survive on, on, on grains. And we have all that in Kogi. So we intend to revitalize our agricultural sector to bring about food sufficiency and enough to export to bring about wealth and job creation for our people. And for the mining, hence the, the previous administration signed the electricity bill, which gives state governments the power to generate electricity. In the Okaba region of Kogi State, which is Ankpa, we have large deposits of coal that could sustain the entire West Africa for decades. So we intend to, to partner with stakeholders to bring about self-generated electricity for our people of our state of Kogi, and an extension that will serve the entire state and give the access to the natural, national grid. This will bring about wealth and job creations for our people. Look at the mining industry. We have numerous this thing. We have, let me take case study to Dangote Cement Company. Dangote came in and he's doing a lot from Kogi State. The, the, the cement deposit, the, the, the natural resources to produce cement is just a minute that Dangote is using. We have several deposits, even in Itobi. The previous administration wanted doing a cement company. We intend to do our own Kogi Cement Company that will bring about massive employment for our people that will bring about a turnaround for our people. With all these that we have, there is no single co-guide. And we are committed in doing this with my team. I, we are committed to change the narrative of Koki State. When we bring all this, there is no people that will have uh, the, 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 the problem of non payment of salary will be a fin of the past. The problem of not having jobs will be a fin of the past. The problem of our healthcare sector that is down, the most vital Parts that function in most of the local government in Kogi State is just the is just the mortuary. We tend to revital, we, we tend to pay key attention to our health sector, and we bring health reachable to every locations of our state. So once we have this economic boom, most of these stuff will be fin of the past, and these are areas that I want to pay key attention to. Mm. All right, I mean all these uh, sound good on paper you know, as far as your nine-point agenda is concerned. Uh, but a lot of the voters in Kogi uh, are also, you know, talking on social media and they are expressing a worry about your experience. Uh, yes, a young, dynamic businessman and a lawyer, but then they say that compared to the candidate of the APC who was an auditor general for the, for the state and compared to the candidate of the PDP, Adino Melai, uh, who has been to the House of Reps, has been the Senator of the Federal Republic, that you do not have the type of public service experience uh, to be able to reposition Kogi uh, in a way that uh, will be meaningful. Do you think that uh, uh, lack of public service experience or exposure uh, will count against you in this forthcoming election? Uh, thank you, Steve. You know, just like a scene in, in, in Latin, there's a maxim. They say, nemo dat quad non habet. You can't give what you don't have. You know, I have been someone that have established a real estate company and a mining company that has employed lots of Kogites and other parts of Nigeria. And these are viable industries that are working very well, which are subject to verification like my principal, P2B. The, the thing about governance, it's someone that has the exposure and expertise to lead. Someone that is ready to do a turnaround from the normal norms to bring about, we're in 21st century for Christ's sake. We're in 21st century. The persons they are calling in the APC and the PDP, what are the antecedents? The other day we're talking of non-payment of salary to the teachers and the local government. People are out of school. I want to bring most of the people that are being retrieved out of jobs that were being removed illegally, I want to return back them back to work. What are the antecedents? It is not just working. What are your achievements in working? All the PDP candidates were talking about, I don't, I don't, I do issue-based politics. What are the antecedents and what do they have to offer? Well, I've grown business from the minute level that are non-business that 
are cap well, captains of industries and, and doing a lot of job employment for our people, which are subject, which co guides our way. And that's why they are yearning for me. And that's why most people are saying, we know he's young, but he's determined. From the family I'm from, we're not, you're not somebody that could fail. My mom was an activist and a woman leader in the state. And her title was EA1. She passed on last year with her blessed memory. She was a teacher. She taught us resilience. And whatever we are determined to do, we do it. It's not just by lip singing that you come on stage and come and say, this is what and what I want to do. What are your previous antecedents? I have lived in Kogi. I have a home in Kogi. I relate with my people. I'm not just someone that is coming for Abuja that wants to come and be a governor that does not know the look and cranny of our state. I didn't just dabble into politics because I want to be a governor. It's because of the pains and the crimes and the yearnings of our people that motivated me to go into governance. So governance is not a thing. In, 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 in UK, Krishna, how old is the prime minister of UK? How old are people that are having elected positions around the world? It's not that age that matters, it's the capacity to deliver. I have the capacity, I have the determination, and I have the love of my people at heart to do a turnaround for my people. So it's not just that age. We should look at antecedents and, and credibility. And I didn't just come here by, by mistake. I did a primary that produced a valuable candidate that brought somebody that they know is good for the job. So most people could just want to go about issues the way they want to go about it. But governance is about leadership. It's about someone that is ready to serve. It's about somebody that is determined to listen to the cries and yearnings of his people and do a turnaround, which when I'm governor, I'm going to be remembered for being the best governor that has brought a template into Kogi State. All right, then. Thank you so much, Mr. Okeme Adejo, lawyer and governorship candidate of the Labour Party. Wish you the very best in the upcoming elections in November.